What is going on my fellow modelers? In today's tutorial video, we're going to be checking out one of the most important parts of the scale modeling finishing process, and that is weathering. A bit of basic weathering can be the difference between your model looking like a plastic toy and looking like a work of art. So today, we're going to look at three super simple techniques using the same two products so you can take your projects to the next level. My name's Hank, welcome to Sprues and Brews Scale Modeling. Let's hop right into it. Today we're going to be focusing on washes, which are one of the key elements of weathering any scale model. To keep things simple, we're going to be using two products, this Ammo Dark Wash and some Ammo Enamel Odorless Thinner. And of course, we're going to need a paintbrush and a model to work on. I'm using this Tamiya T26E3, but these techniques will work on any model. One really important note before we get started, before you do any weathering on your model, it's critical to first apply a coat of gloss varnish. These can be sprayed via an airbrush, or if you don't have an airbrush, they also come in disposable spray cans. I'll link to some recommendations in the description below if you don't have a varnish at home. What this gloss varnish does is protect your paint layer from the caustic enamel products, which have a tendency to eat acrylic paint if it's not properly protected. The wash we'll be using for these three techniques today is by Ammo MIG, it's their enamel dark wash, and it's my go-to for 90% of my weathering work. Basically, this is just a really thin down enamel paint designed to flow into the nooks and crannies and help accentuate the details of a model. The other half of our duo here is Ammo's Odorless Enamel Thinner, which is going to help us work with our wash, help it flow where we need it, and help remove any excess we don't need. And of course, a trusty paintbrush is also key. I like this set from eBoot. I'll have links to all the products we use today in the description below if you'd like to check them out. Our first wash technique is called a pin wash. This is the most precise of our techniques today, and it's for accentuating fine details like panel lines, rivets, bolt heads, etc. To start, we'll apply a little bit of our thinner to the areas where we want the wash to flow. These are the recesses in the model where there might be a shadow, for example. These are areas further away from the light than other parts of the model, so we want to accentuate that. These are also areas that would collect more dirt and grime. Once the thinner is applied, we can very carefully add some tiny dots of dark wash right on these bolt heads, and you can see the wash just naturally flows along that panel line on the fender. Right off the bat, you can see how much clearer that detail of the model is. The pin wash is great for drawing the viewer's attention to these tiny elements of your build. Now, these washes might look a little messy at first, but don't worry, we're going to do some cleanup work in just a moment. Once our pin wash is applied, we can clean and dry off our brush with a paper towel, and then we're going to soak up some of that excess liquid with that same brush. The capillary action of the brush is going to soak up a bit of our enamels, and we want to take off anything that's not in those recessed areas where we want the shadows. One of the great things about enamel products is that they dry very slowly, so you've got a long working time to add more wash or remove excess wash as you see fit. Once you're happy with the effect, let it dry, and boom, you've got some nice, sharp details. Moving on to our second wash today, this one is called a sludge wash. As the name might suggest, this one's a bit messier than its precise pin wash cousin. It's a great wash for accentuating details with a lot of folds or textures, particularly bits of stowage like this. And what you're going to do is simply brush a bit of your dark wash all over the element of your model that you want to weather. This will look really messy, but the sludge wash method is all about what you remove rather than what you apply to the model. Once your stowage is good and messy, load up your brush with some enamel thinner and apply it to the highest areas of your stowage that are closest to the light. The thinner is going to naturally flow into the recessed areas and creases of all these folds in the fabric, and it's going to carry the wash with it so that we're left behind with clean, flat parts of the bedroll, or tarp, and shadows in all the folds. And just like that, these bits of stowage look so much more realistic. Moving on to our third wash technique today, and this one is kind of my own creation. I call it a texture wash. It's kind of like a filter, which we'll cover in a video on another day. This wash is great for elements of a model that have a lot of texture, like the mantlet on this turret. This is cast steel rather than flat rolled steel, so it's got a lot of bumps and texture to it that would collect dirt and grime. To really make this pop, we're going to brush a whole bunch of dark wash all over the cast texture. Once that's on there, we're going to load up our brush with some thinner and start applying it all over the area we just washed. What's going to happen here is twofold. The wash on the model will start flowing down with gravity, and you'll start picking up some of the excess as well. 
If you work the thinner from top to bottom, you'll be left with just enough wash on the turret to really cling onto those little cast texture bumps and make them look like they've collected some muck while this tank is off cruising around. You can pull off as much or as little wash as you see fit, and once you're done, you just let it all dry. And if you go ahead and repeat these three weathering steps where applicable all over your model, you'll be well on your way to having a professional looking rough and tumble model kit. And just a note here, after all this weathering we've done, I've sprayed this Pershing with a coat of matte varnish to help seal in all of our hard work. If you got something out of today's lesson, please be sure to subscribe right here for more educational scale modeling content. I've got great new videos coming out every week. And if you'd like to keep working on your weathering skills, you can check out the next lesson right here. I've been Hank from Sprues and Brews. Until next time, my friends, be well, happy building, cheers.